This is a steam engine. This is a human body. The steam engine needs fuel to operate and so does the human body. Coal is fed as fuel to the steam engine. Food is fed as fuel to the human body. Coal is burned to get energy for the steam engine. Food is burned to get energy for the human body. Let's assume some amount of coal is not burned and left in the engine. The remaining coal is stored inside the engine so that it can be used later. What if the stored coal is not used first but more coal is put in? Obviously, the new coal will be used first. What if some of the new coal also remains? Again it will be stored. If this process continues, there will be a time when the engine will be full of stored coal and no new coal can be put in. Similarly, if some of the food is not burned and left in the human body, the remaining food is stored inside the body so that it can be used later. What if, first, the stored food is not used for energy but more food is taken? Obviously, the new food will be burned for energy. What if some of this new food also remains? Again, it will be stored. If this process continues, there will be a time when the human body will have lot of stored food. This example is to explain how our body works and stores foods in a layman term. Now let's get to the details of it. Let's find out. Fuel is equal to food, is equal to calories, is equal to energy. Yes, the food we eat is measured in a unit called calories. One calorie, also called as large calorie, is defined as the amount of energy it would take to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. Everything we consume has calories. The average pizza slice has about 272 calories. A piece of bread has about 78 calories and an apple has about 52 calories. Our body requires energy for each and every task. Even when we are sleeping, we are still breathing, food is being digested and blood is circulating inside our body. Energy is required even for these tasks as well. So the food we eat or the calories we intake is converted into energy. The process of converting food into energy is called metabolism. This energy is known as glucose. Glucose is a form of simple sugar. The glucose travels through our bloodstream and is the main form of energy for all our cells like muscle cells, brain cells, fat cells, etc. Our body feeds on glucose. That is why glucose drips are given to sick patients so that their body can get direct energy without having to go through the process of converting food into glucose. Now, as glucose moves through the bloodstream, our pancreas produces a hormone called insulin. Insulin opens up the gate and allows glucose to enter each and every cell to get the required energy. Without insulin, the cells cannot be fed. It's like the gates are closed without insulin. And also, without insulin, Glucose level on blood will increase rapidly and this will lead to diabetes. Sometimes we eat more than we need or there is more glucose present in our blood than the cells need. Muscle cells or brain cells never take in more glucose than they need. So the excess glucose is stored in fat cells. The stored glucose is converted into fat, medically called as free fatty acids. Once all the glucose in the blood is utilized, the insulin closes the gates of all the cells and slowly leaves the body. More production of insulin stops. Now, whenever our body needs more energy and there is no glucose left in the bloodstream, it turns to the fat cells. The glucose saved inside the fat cells, which is free fatty acids, leaves our fat cells and goes into the bloodstream to feed other cells, thus providing energy. They don't need insulin to open the gate to feed the cells. This happens without insulin. That is why they refer to as free fatty acids. This process is referred as fat burning. This natural process of storing fat when you have too much glucose and burning fat when you don't have enough glucose is how our body is designed to work. So how do I make sure my body does not store fat? It's simple. Burn all the calories that you intake. And how do I burn the calories? The calories you eat is burned by performing three main tasks, digestion, physical activity, 
and by supporting the basic functions for organs and tissues. On an average, the amount of calories required for a man to perform all these three tasks is about 2,700 calories. For a woman, it's about 2,200 calories. So if an average man who does a desk job eats exactly 2,700 calories a day, then all the calories will be burned and there won't be any fat storage in the body. But if he eats more than that, let's say 3,000 calories, then he has to do something to burn the additional 300 calories. Otherwise, it will be stored as fat. Now, he cannot use that for digestion or support body functions because they have already been taken care of by 2,700 calories. So, the only thing remaining is physical activity. Yes, you got it. He has to do additional physical activity to burn the remaining 300 calories. It means the more and more additional calories he eats, he has to burn it by more physical activity. If no additional physical activity is performed, the additional calories are stored in fat cells. That is how a person gains weight and that is why burning fat involves more of physical activities. I hope by now you have understood why our body stores fat. In the next video, we will learn more related to fat and losing fat. Stay subscribed to never miss a new video. Hit like if you have learned something new and share it with others. Remember, you are important. Thank you.